Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. What an honor and privilege to be here, to be your children, and to be ready to open your word to meditate in, in it. We ask you, Lord, the presence of your Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, that when we finish this service and when we all be ready to go home, all of us may say, I had an encounter with Jesus. Because I pray, I pray this in the, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the Lord is good. How many say amen? amen? The Lord is good and his love is eternal and his faithfulness lasts forever. Let us repeat that after me. The Lord is good. His love is eternal. And his faithfulness lasts forever. That. Amen. That's what uh, Psalm 100, verse 5 says. Well, November, we're just about a few weeks, and Christmas is coming, New Year is coming, and uh, you may ask yourselves, what is going to happen next year? <laughs> will it be a year of setbacks and disappointments, or it will be a year of happiness and good things? I don't know what you're expecting, but the Lord says that all of us who trust in Him Anything that happens in our lives will be for our own good. So I'm expecting a next year with, with hope and with happiness because the Lord, when you see the past, when you think about the memories and we could say the Lord is good to us. So I'm expecting next year, 2019, to be a year of blessings for the church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the people of God. Well... Let me tell you something. The title of this topic, it is found in John 1, 38. It's a question. The question, what do you want? What do you want? Questions. Why questions? Well, questions are part of our lives. Well, when you go home, your wife asks you, hey, how was your day? And then you explain to her, what happened during that day in your work? You ask to hear the same thing. You get into the conversation. Your kids come to you and ask you, hey, dad, how was your day? Is it sí, bueno, thank you. ¿Por qué el cielo es azul? Why, why? So I had to do a, some research and so I could explain my son why the sky is blue. Well, there are times that we ask our children different questions. For example, I have a 16 years old daughter, and you know how difficult it is. You know, they act different like when I was 16 years old, and I have a, you know these bills, 50 pesos? <laughs> <laughs> I have a 13 years old kid, and you know, now they are into different situations that I have to spend time with him and ask questions. Hey, Jaciel, that's his name. How was your day? And, oh, that's okay. Hey, tell me about your classes. Everything is fine. Uh, what are you doing uh, after school? Or what do you do on, 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 on different breaks? And, you know, we call them descanso, recesos. Every, every, after every class in junior high, they take five to ten minutes break. And I ask him, ¿Qué haces, hijo mío? And, and there are times that he says, oh, oh, everything is okay. And I make questions because I want for him to open his heart and his mind so I will know what's going on in his life. Questions are part of our lives. But let me tell you something. In the Bible, we have more than 3,000 questions. 3,000 questions. Questions that, uh, that you know, the answers. And some of those questions, for example, Genesis 3.1, you find the first question. Did God really say? Few chapters after it says, few verses, what are you? Genesis 4.9, it says, am I my brother's keeper? Another question that you find in the, in the Old Testament, are you still maintaining your integrity? Of course, God and I, you know those words. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? 
questions. Questions are important because questions make you think. But not only that, the answer, it explains who you are, what's your life philosophy. It tells you if you believe in God. It tells you which family you belong to. That's the reason questions are very important. Very important. In the Gospels, you find 307 questions. That's what Jesus did. He asked 307 questions in the four different Gospels. But you find also that he is asked 183 questions. And he only answered a few of those questions. Questions are important. Someone say, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. Sí, juzga al hombre por sus preguntas más que por sus respuestas. Es lo que podemos encontrar en la vida. That's what we might find in the people's lives. That's another quotation that says, we make our world significant by the courage of our questions and by the depth of our answers. Therefore, I ask you this morning, what do you want? John 1, 38. What do you want? The next day, John chapter 1, verse 35 says, The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Verse 37, when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They say, Ravi, where are you staying? Verse 39, come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter, brothers, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which translated means it's Peter. Yes. Questions. Do you know that John started his message in a different way than Matthew, than Mark, and Luke? Yes. Jesus' first words in the, in the Gospel of John appear in the form of a question. An ordinary question with extraordinary significance. What do you want? Jesus' ministry begins not with a mighty command to silence a demon, as in Mark, nor with a sermon to the crowds who have gathered in a mountain, as in Matthew, and nor with a quotation from Isaiah to proclaim his anointing for the year of God's favor, as in Luke. But it begins with a question. What do you want? What are you seeking? What are you looking for? What are your needs? It's a question worth wrestling with as individuals, as congregations, as communities. Since our answers will have a great deal to do with what we find as well as with the journey we take to get there. What are you seeking? What motivates you? What is that you really need? Not just on the surface, but deep down in the core of your being. What are you looking for? Those are questions that we need to answer. As when I was about 17, 17 years old. At that time, I was living in Mexico City. And I remember that I was sitting on the sidewalk. At that time, I didn't know the truth of the gospel. I didn't even know at that time about the Seventh-day Adventist church. And I was sitting there, 17 years old. And there, I asked a question. Lord, what do you want for my life? Sitting there, people that live close by your homes, your co-workers, your friends, that we call them non-believers or not Adventists, they have needs. 
they have questions. The Holy Spirit is working in their lives also. But you and I, we were called to do a special task, a special work. You and I were called to be God's instruments to take, to take the gospel, the good news. And people need good news. They need hope. They need to find something better. 17 years old, sitting there, drinking a jar of juice, and I was eating a piece of bread, sitting there, about a thousand kilometers from my hometown, in a city where I only had one friend working there. At that time, I was not in school anymore. And I asked God, God, what do you want for my life? When you open your heart to God in a sincere way, in a humble way, He will answer and He will provide for your needs. Questions that may change the way you think, your vision, your desires, your dreams. And your life. But John started the gospel in a different way. Different than Matthew. Different than Mark. Dif different than Luke. With the question, what are you seeking? What are you looking for? What do you want? What are your dreams? Tell me. Tell me. How is your life? How's your home? How's your job? Are you really a Christian? Are you really a believer? Do you really want to have a relationship with God? I mean, a real relationship with Him. And you know what I'm talking about. Many times when we accept the message, I don't know why, I don't know how, We get involved in so many things that instead, instead of looking at Jesus, we turn around and we act as a Christians, we dress as a Christians, we participate in the church, but in somehow there's a barrier be between God and us, and and we we lose the taste of real Christianity. Therefore, this week, I'm going to ask you questions. Questions is straight from the Bible. Questions that Jesus asked that may help us to refocus our life, to renew our faith, to renew our relationship, to renew the desire to share the gospel, to renew the relationships in home, with our wife, with our husband, with our children, with our family, with our extended family, with the members of the church, with the community, because the Lord brought us to this place, the beautiful Rio Grande Valley, a place where people from different nations come with the desire to have a new life, with the feeling that this place is a blessing for them. The Lord brought you from different countries, not just to have a better financial status, not only to, to improve your professional life, but He brought you here to go beyond your dreams, beyond your vision, beyond of what, what, what you had in the past, your plans, those plans, those beautiful plans. Well, let me tell you, the Lord has something better for you and brought you this far because He knows, He knows that He can use you as an instrument to change other people's life. He promised, I'll be with you until when? 
Und Joch ist kommen. So, what do you want? What are you seeking? What are you looking for? What are your needs? What are your dreams? Let me tell you something. When I was 17, I never thought that I'll be a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. No. I didn't know about Adventist church. I only know at that time, the Baptists, they had a church about two blocks from my hometown. And from my home, and another evangelical church, and the Jehovah Witness. But the Lord is good. His plans for us are bigger than ours. His patience is wonderful. His grace, His grace. We don't have enough words to explain His, his grace, His forgiveness. And the power to change our lives. He says that all of those who are in Christ are new creatures. He does something in our lives. He implants something in our lives that we change. The things that we used to love, we hate those things. And the things that we don't like, that we don't love, now are part of our lives. Just think about you, about your life. And think about he, how he guided your life, how he brought you this far. Imagine your life without Christ. Well, that's what happened in the majority of people around us. They don't have the knowledge that you have. They don't have the access to those beautiful studies that we have every Sabbath on our Sabbath school. But the Lord brought you to this place to be an instrument and to guide you to change other people's life. Well, you just had elections this past week, right? Well, what are you looking for? Is what do you want? Is a question that the marketers would say on this question. We have often heard it said, "Find out what people want and give it to them." Politicians would sit on this question. They would form a focus group and learn what the people want and develop some overnight convictions and phrases and speeches. So people will seek for them and vote for them. We just had elections a few months ago in Mexico. It was a big and tremendous issue. It divided part of the country. 30 years of certain kind of government issues and point of views. But now, someone came out. 30 million people voted for him. Just imagine. They do research. What the people want. What are their needs. What they want to hear. What are those words that will help them to steal the mind and the hearts of people so they will come out on the election date and vote for them. But Jesus tells me this morning, what do you want, Francisco? What do you want, Mary? What do you want, David? What do you want, Joseph? What are you looking for? Do you have what you expected? Do you have what you want? John chapter 1 is a beautiful chapter. It is a beautiful chapter. And I want for you to open God's word, God's word on that chapter. John chapter 1. Verse 
the context of that question. It says, verse 29, John the Baptist was doing his job. Every time that I meditate or read part of John the Baptist's ministry, it touches my heart. As he was a humble man and his relationship with God, ready to preach God's word, ready to give everything. And when he was very popular, famous, he was willing to direct all his followers to Jesus Christ. That is tremendous. Verse 29 it says, The next day John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. Look, the Lamb of God. Verse 30, it says, this is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Verse 32, it says, Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. Verse 33, I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on who you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. What a powerful words. His followers were with him when he pointed. He aquí el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Verse 39, 35. He lost two of his disciples. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Verse 37. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And they understood that the Son of God was before them. That the person that John the Baptist pointed and called the Lamb of God was really the Lamb of God. The one who takes the sin away. The one who washes your sins and cleans your life. The one who forgives your past. The one who gives you a new life and a new future. The one who promised that, will, that he will be with you all the days of your life until his coming. The one who says, if you committed a sin, confess your sins. And I will clean your life. And I will will wash your life and I will forgive your sins and I will change your life and I will give you a purpose for your life. What do you want? That you understood that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Verse 39. They hear those beautiful words. Come and you will see. Come. That's what Jesus says this morning. Come to me, all who are tired of this life, all who, are em who have emptiness in your life. Come, come, and you will see. Have you tried to change with your, with your own abilities? Has tratado de vencer con tu propio poder? Have you tried to defeat those bad habits with your own strength? 
Jesus says, come, come, and you will see. The word of God says, few verses after. Verse 43. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Why? Why the Lord wants a relationship with me? Verse 50. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, but you shall see greater things than that. That's what the Lord is saying to us this morning. My son, I know how is your life. I know how hard have you tried. I know how many times you have failed. I know that you have tried. You have tried, you have said, but apart from me, you can do nothing. He said to you, come to me and you will see. He said to you this morning, follow me because you shall see greater things than that. You will see greater, greater things than that. Time passed by. I was 20 years old. Just in my end, 20 years old. I'm 44. 24 years ago. And a friend, a classmate came to me and he asked me, Francisco, Francisco, two years after I asked God, what do you want from me? When I was 17, I was not attending school. When I was 17, I stopped attending high school. I tried once in one school, and I didn't finish. I started in another school. The same thing happened. So I stopped attending school. Do you know some kids that are not attending school anymore? That live around your neighborhood? Well, I was one of those. But the Lord is so good to us. And when I was 19, I went back to school. My third time in high school. I was one of the oldest students. <laughs> all, all of those kids were 15, 16, 17. I was 19. But a classmate asked me, do you believe in God? I said, yes, yes, I did. I do believe in God. Do you believe in the Bible? I said, yes. Well, that's what I heard when I was a kid at home. Yeah, the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. We never read it. But we said, is the word of God? We had it open on Psalm 23. That's what many people do. We don't read it, but it's open in the living room. And he said, you would like to study the Bible? Three questions. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Bible? Would you like to study the Bible? And I said, yes. And then I learn about Jesus. I learn about his love. I learn about his commandments, about his second coming. And that he wanted for me to be part of his people. Questions that make you think but that also fails you with the reality of life. And I got baptized a few months after. Time passed by. 
And I say, Lord, I was doing something else. I was working. I was studying something else, another career. But I understood that the Lord was calling me. As he called you, working as a teacher, working as a nurse, as a physician, as a lawyer, working at the store, anywhere, he called you to do his will. Questions that face you with the reality of life, that without Jesus, we are not, we are nothing. Without him, we don't have any value. Without him, there's no hope. You and I, you and I, tú y yo, necesitamos a Cristo. We need you. We need Jesus Christ in our lives. I know what you want. You want to see Jesus Amen. soon. Do you want to see Jesus? Amen. Do you want to renew your relationship with him? Amen. Stand up with me and let's sing the last song. Hymns to 305. Give me Jesus. 305. Heavenly Father, nuestro Padre Celestial, we thank you once again for your love and your mercy. Gracias te damos por tu amor y tu gracia. We thank you for this church, for all the families represented here. Please, oh Lord, bless them abundantly. I ask you, Lord, that you will provide for their needs according to the riches of your glory and your grace. Amen. That, oh Lord, that we will have the desire to follow you and to be ready to share the love of God with others. Amen. The people of this world only Jesus. That with your power and with your spirit, 
we may share the good news of salvation. Bless our lives and bless the food. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.